seems that only the most hardcore of sci-fi fans would have time for these. Just try and relax, Mrs. Lowry. Mm. I'll make you 20 years younger. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we'll be counting down our picks for the top 10 sci-fi movies you've probably never seen. You know you're starting to sound like a goddamn poodle. You're starting to sound like a jackass. For this list, we're focusing on the science fiction movies that you may have heard of, but chances are that most people today have never bothered to sit down and actually watch them in their entirety. Yeah, yeah, this is what they're talking about on the news. Yeah, yeah, it must be the comet. Number 10, Coherence. No, wait. The clues are still here. You know that feeling when you've just dropped acid during an important algebra test? No? Really? Well, then pop this one in your media player and enjoy. We're in a different a different reality here. Yeah, we're in a different reality because the reality where I am from, my best friend didn't sleep with my wife. Coherence, unlike its title suggests, makes zero sense upon first viewing. But by viewing number nine or so, you've watched this too many times and you probably still don't understand. If we're collapsing right now, I'm going to collapse realities. on them. Okay, wait a minute. I'm not going to wait for them to collapse on us. A bunch of friends are hanging out as a meteor passes overhead and suddenly reality is shattered. Oh, that's wow. magnificent. They meet alternate versions of themselves and try desperately to get back to their original reality while avoiding or killing their doubles. Do you remember that movie Sliding Doors where just a fraction of a second there, there could be two realities? In the end, it doesn't matter. Everyone's happy and we still don't know what we just watched. Mm, maybe. What's it doing? No. It's breaking up. Is that what oh they God. do? Number nine, The Last Man on Earth. December 1965. Is that all it has been since I inherited the world? Imagine I Am Legend, but instead of Will Smith, Vincent Price. Well, hop in the Wayback Machine because they did it in 1964 and it's pretty okay. And how many more of these will I have to make before they're all destroyed? They want my blood, if their lives are mine. And I still get squeamish. In the near future, 1968, a plague has wiped out mankind and replaced them with zombie-like vampires. Zompires? Vampies? Eh, whatever. The only man left is Dr. Robert Morgan. He and his pencil mustache take to the streets during the day to brutally murder the vampire horde. An unknown germ is being blown around the world. It's highly contagious and it's reached plague proportion. If you haven't seen this version yet, that's probably because the story keeps getting remade. As we saw in 1971's The Omega Man, starring Charlton Heston. There's never a cop around when you need one. Or maybe just because the title is confusingly slapped onto other properties. Are you a nice person? Oh, okay, yes! Yes, I'm really nice. I'm very, very, very nice. I'm so nice, seriously. I promise you. Number eight, Naked Lunch. Exterminate all rational thought. That is the conclusion I have come to. Peter Weller, giant bugs and drug use? Sounds like an unforgettable combination, right? I got busted for bug powder. I started hallucinating behind the stage. Well, now you can watch and enjoy the full incomprehensible splendor of Naked Lunch, directed by the master of why would you show me that gore himself, David Cronenberg. <laughs> if you've seen Cronenberg's films before, then you know that sci-fi and body horror are coming, and Naked Lunch does not disappoint. I've been killing my own wife slowly over a period of years. What? Well, not intentionally. William Lee is an exterminator slash writer who's gotten high off his own supply and now does the bidding of giant bugs and aliens while trying to publish a book and shoot glasses off the head of his wife or anyone who looks like that. Fun for all. Fenway! 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 We met once before, remember? Stateside. Number seven, Soylent Green. As the world wants you, punk. Yeah, so you keep telling me. In the distant future of 2022, cities are overcrowded, pollution is rampant, and food is scarce. The only solution? Artificial food, of course. A new delicious Soylent Green. The miracle food of high-energy plankton gathered from the oceans of the world. Detective Frank Thorne is caught up in a suspicious murder case and falls down the rabbit hole of industrial espionage and assassination plots. He was murdered, you know. Assassinated. Robbery had nothing to do with it. When the truth is discovered, although we won't reveal that here, Thorne must expose it to the world, although he's effectively telling everyone a truth they don't want to know. The supply of soil and green has been exhausted. You must evacuate the area. Soil and Green produced what has now become a famous quote, but when your film's most famous line reveals the twist of your movie, there might not be much incentive for a new audience to see it. You tell everybody. Listen to me, Hatcher. You gotta tell him! Number six, Time Crimes. Ta-da! Ta-da! Are you not yet tired of time travel paradox movies? Well, give this one a spin and sit back as your mind is blue. Has viajado en el tiempo. 
The premise is simple in absolutely no way. A man ends up in a time loop and ends up having to try to prevent the death of his wife. The events of the film are played over and over again until he gets it right, and as is to be expected, there are several versions of him running around out there to ensure things play out as they should, although sometimes they're working at cross purposes. If you loved all that time travel stuff from Back to the Future, but thought it could use more horror and thrills and less comedy, this Spanish weird fest might just be right up your alley. Tengo del futuro. Vuestra máquina funciona. Pero ¿dónde es? Escúchame. Number five, Westworld. Slap it with your drink. Jurassic Park, but with killer cowboy robots. What's the catch? There's no catch. Just grab a popcorn and enjoy. There's no way to get hurt here. Just enjoy yourself. Before Michael Crichton penned his now famous and sequelized sci-fi epic about dinosaurs running amok in a theme park, the author had a first draft of the very same story, but with another villain that kids love. Well, they may have been robots. I mean, uh... I think they were robots. At le I mean, I, I know they were robots. When two buddies visit a different kind of theme park full of gunslinging androids, they begin to suspect that something is amiss when the robots begin brutally murdering tourists. They must survive as chaos descends upon the park and dinosaurs relentlessly chase them. Uh, excuse me, robot cowboys. Robot cowboys relentlessly chase them. Doesn't anything work around here? Number four, a boy and his dog. I hope the next time you play with yourself, you go blind. Ah, the classic tale of a young man and his telepathic dog that helps him find women to sex up in a post-apocalyptic wasteland. If you haven't seen a boy and his dog yet, then why not? One does not say ain't, Albert. Simply say, I'm not kidding. Fine, dog meat. And stop calling me Albert. The plot, based on stories by fantasy writer Harlan Ellison, boasts a solid, if slightly unusual, premise and introduces a lot of what we now take for granted as post-apocalyptic story tropes, like mutants, raised robots, and underground communities living in bunkers. Get another Michael out of the warehouse. This time, make sure the engineering department wipes that smile off his face. You never quite root for the eponymous boy or his dog, or any of the other characters for that matter, but the film has become integral to sci-fi and post-apocalyptic lore. Fallout to anyone? Now, you got any helpful suggestions? Yes, pull up your pants, Romeo. Number three, Brazil. Listen, kid, we're all in this together. If you're familiar with any of Terry Gilliam's directorial work, then you know that most people consider this to be his magnum opus. Was he? Really? In an Orwellian dystopia, government employee Sam Laurie is tasked with investigating a clerical error that caused the interrogation and death of an innocent man. I only know you got the wrong man. Uh, information transit, got the wrong man. I got the right man. The wrong man was delivered to me as the right man. I accepted him on good faith as the right man. The film blends cartoonish fantasy with gloomy sci-fi as the hapless Laurie navigates a bleak bureaucratic world while also imagining himself in heroic situations. Because we're dealing with Gilliam, you can expect a lot of wacky caricatures and lavish sets. And what the hell is this mess? An empty desk is an efficient desk. Though it's gotten rave reviews over the years, it was also described as hard to follow by Roger Ebert, which perhaps explains why most people haven't seen it. There's what you wanted in it! Oh, I don't know. I don't know what I want. Number two, Forbidden Planet. Just doesn't fit into normal nature. Anywhere in the galaxy, this is a nightmare. It doesn't get much more sci-fi than this. When an invisible force begins murdering human colonists on a distant planet, a crew goes to investigate to see what all the fuss is about. Nice climate you have here. High oxygen content. I rarely use it myself, sir. It promotes rust. A young, dashing and dark-haired Leslie Nielsen stars as Commander John Adams and leads his crew to uncover the truth about the invisible menace. That door, and I have no power to stop it. Robots, spaceships, and jumpsuits abound in Forbidden Planet, so this hidden gem is well worth uncovering. Now, be sure and look only in the mirror. Man does not behold the face of the Gorgon and live. In fact, Star Trek creator Gene Roddenberry cites this movie as one of his prime inspirations he used to come up with his sci-fi series, so it's got merit. If you do not speak English, I am at your disposal with 187 other languages along with their various dialects and sub-tongues. Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Be careful. Yes. Come on. 
compared to the breadth of knowledge yet to be known, or does your life actually matter? I have come here to chew bubblegum and kick ass. And I'm all out of bubblegum. You guys go out without me. I'll be all right. Christ. All he does in his sleep is quit, surrender, and apologize. I could carve a better man out of a banana. I have to apologize. I was born with a disfigurement where my head is made of the same material as the sun. It makes it impossible for you to look directly at me. What is it? I don't know. Whatever it is, it's war. Number one, Metropolis. Though it was made before most of our grandparents were even born, most people have heard of Metropolis, either from pop culture references or a friend who keeps going on about its social relevance, bro. The film is an impressive work of German filmmaking by Fritz Lang, a production so big and lavish that it caught the attention and praise of Adolf Hitler, much to the director's shock. The story deals with social and political change, which was a big issue in Germany at the time, to say the least. Despite its futuristic setting, audiences drew many parallels between Metropolis and the current events of the era, which is the aim of almost all good sci-fi. Do you agree with our list? What sci-fi films have you never had time to watch? Your move. For more entertaining top tens that you really should check out, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. Come on, before they turn the lights out. Mm -hmm.